We turn to an artist who once called himself an outsider, but soon found a second home in the Midlands thanks to his work. Our neighboring city of West Columbia is just a short trip across the Congaree River, a city with a story all being captured along the walls of one of the area buildings. Our Justin Walsh tells us how a Nashville-based painter brought the story of the city's past and present to life while finding a second home in the West Columbia community throughout the process. Take a look. The feel of a community captured, a pop of color to bring light to busy city streets, a symbol of where we've been and where we're heading. And if you're wondering where to find it, all you have to do is look up. Public art murals are definitely for for the community. After crossing the Congaree River Bridge from the capital city into West Columbia, a piece of the Midlands past has been preserved on the corner of Meeting and State Street. The word Brooklyn, against a colorful background plastered across the side of a commercial building, could go unnoticed to the unsuspecting eye. To understand it, you have to take a trip through the area's past. Mostly historic. They wanted to, to respect what, what um, West Columbia was and is, and it used to be called Brooklyn, um, Brooklyn, South Carolina, and then the name changed uh, some years ago uh, to West Columbia. That name change happened back in 1938. Now, all these years later, what's being called the Brooklyn Project is renewing the area while also staying true to its historic roots, which are all captured on this mural. But they wanted just historic imagery, like the mill houses, uh, mill workers, uh, the church, uh, kind of what it's found, what West Columbia was founded on. And Brian Toll was the artist called upon to bring that image to life. The Nashville-based painter has been working his craft since 2007, and two years ago, project developer Estates and Companies asked him to take on the mural. But what they are asking of the artist was unlike anything he tackled before. But mostly I'm a studio artist, like for private private collections, like large-scale paintings, maybe seven feet by five feet, somewhere along there. Pretty large paintings, but not mural size. Brian has created plenty of large-scale pieces in his time, but the Brooklyn mural called for a higher demand, and they really did mean higher. This one was uh, started 15 feet off the ground and went 33 feet up and then 37 across. Capturing the long-standing history of the then Brooklyn didn't just happen overnight. The artist tells us that the project consumed many hours out of his days for quite a long time. Uh, 23 to 26 days to paint, like literally paint with color, um, but the whole process was about three months. And it's the hours of preparation, the landslide of ideas, and the substantial cost of the project that will usually go unrecognized to any passerby. Yeah, he said, your, your uh, process is exhausting. <laughs> I said, it is. <laughs> Toll wasn't just given every means to make it happen. He puts his own money into bringing this vision to life. The artist gave us permission to share the reality of what it takes to fund a project as big as this. What was initially estimated at around $700, later turned into $13,000 out of his own pocket. But 40 cans of spray paint later, he tells us that seeing his work becoming a part of a tight-knit community makes it all worth it. You just share it with you know, the process is shared. Uh, every bit of it is shared with passersby, like the public. And then uh, you just give it to that, that area, that local area, the region. You know, it's for, for everyone. What started as his own work now belongs to a community that he wasn't even a part of to begin with. But it was through absorbing the area's story that brought him closer to the community he was gifting this mural to. Toll saying it was the time he and his family spent experiencing West Columbia that gave him a better idea as to how to translate the city's story onto this wall. Well, of course you can do online research, Google things, uh, but it's better just to see, visit people, eat at the local restaurants, uh, the coffee shops, and uh, just, just get a feel like literally for the area. I saw everything in the mural. You know, I don't live here, but I felt like I was from here because every day I would drive and see like everything. From the State House to the Congaree Bridge, down to the State Street Strip, the Brooklyn mural offers a nostalgic feel for those who've called the area home for so many years and lets those like Brian in on what it is that makes West Columbia a place worth holding on to. Once I finish, it'll definitely be a place that I miss and it'll be one of those places that I come to visit often. 
And comeback he has as Brian is currently back in town leaving his mark on yet another part of the capital city, giving new life to a wall on the alley in Eloise Bake Shop on Divine Street. It's nothing more than just just art. You know, it doesn't, doesn't symbolize the businesses that are in here um, uh, or, or anything like that. It's just, just art for the community. So even after every can of spray paint is drained and every piece of tape has been laid down, it's the limitless creativity that he never grows tired of. Growing up and the freedom, like, <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> and bringing new meaning to whatever community he leaves his mark on. In Columbia, Justin Walsh, WIS News 10. Yeah.